he'll say that it's really your intense if you're focusing and you're coming out and you'll say you know if you want to head toward the door you'll say like door now and just keep that intent the second you start thinking about your body or any bit of fear that would come in you typically will just come right out of it and how you know you're not asleep it's really it happens within that theta state so it's just about you're just super relaxed um you can certainly meditate and these can probably happen pretty easily um but just right before you're you're about ready to to be unconscious or go to sleep um that's typically when it happens i'm here today with chris marks who has had spontaneous out-of-body experiences for the past 40 years, which has taught her more. She's come to learn more about who we are, the bigger picture of what all this is. Welcome, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you, Tia. I'm super excited to be here with you. And thank you for having your podcast. I think it's wonderful. The more, the more, the more of these out there, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I'm really excited to hear about your experience. And I, as I understand, you're going to share some tips and techniques with the audience on how they can have their own experience as well. Is that correct? Uh, hopefully, that's the, that's the idea. Um, really, it, I just thought explaining what's happened to me over the years, if this has happened to anybody else and they were wondering, um, they're not alone. <laughs> I thought I was alone a long time ago, uh, but I have come to find I'm, I'm certainly not unique because this happens to quite a few people, but yeah, happy to go through some of my experiences and, and how it all started. So yeah, well, well, take me back 40 years ago and tell me how this all started for you. Sure. So, uh, the very first time this happened, um, yeah, really took me by surprise. Um, I I was in my bedroom, and um, first of all, I'll just tell you the the initial um, sensation that that you'll get is that your whole body, uh, including your head, especially your head, really you just have this intense vibration that comes up. It's almost like your body is acting like a tuning fork. Um, so yeah, if you can imagine just what that might feel like, and then, and then you just, you just kind of, um, in my case, just kind of like twist out, um, and, or you just kind of feel something that's something separating from your body. So, um, I, that had happened and, um, it just was very bizarre, obviously. So uh, didn't go anywhere at that point, um, did come back down into my body. Um, but I thought to myself, if this happens again, um, I'm going to take notes, take specific notes um, and see if I can see the position of my body and kind of verify when I, when I, you know, come to, if you will, uh, what position I was in. Uh, also, maybe take note of the clock radio, the timestamp, and how long that whole process was. So um, the next time it happened, um, I took note of my body, but same thing. Just I looked at my body, looked at the time, and sure enough, I was in that exact position. Um, it probably the timestamp was probably within uh, a minute. It wasn't like a fifteen minute time span, but um, but again, this was like in the early eighties. Um, and really didn't understand what was happening. So uh, back then, uh, I don't think this bookstore still exists. I think they have an online presence at this point, but um, in Los Angeles, uh, just outside of where I live, there's a place called the Bodhi Tree Bookstore. So I had gone there. It's kind of a spiritual uh, metaphysical type bookstore, or at least they specialized in it. Uh, so I grabbed a book or two um, and I believe one of the books um, I picked up was by a guy named Robert Peterson. And uh, so he actually spelled out, he, he documented them, all of his OBEs, um, which again, just to go back a little bit, basically an out-of-body experience is it's similar sort of to an NDE. It's just without the trauma. Um, I think with NDEs, there's, there's different experiences that happen. Um, 
OBEs, I think you're just, you're, you're just going within a certain, as I've learned over the years, a certain density, if you will, I'm just going to call it a density. There's, you know, supposedly many layers, uh, they're all thought responsive. Um, so I think this is just going into, uh, what physicist Tom Campbell would call, uh, and non-physical material realities and, and, and NPR. Um, so it's just kind of one layer in, uh, so you can see, you know, the physical matter, but you're not in that, you know, like your hand is going to go through the wall or the ceiling or what have you. So, um, so I was kind of grasping a little bit of what, what was happening to me. And then over the, over the course of the years, um, uh, maybe about seven or eight years ago, I decided to document them because I was like, how often am I having these? Um, and it really turns out to be about once every, about once every six weeks. So uh, I can go a couple times, having them a couple times a month. And by the way, these are all spontaneous. I'm not inducing them. So you can induce them. Um, mine have always been spontaneous. Why? That's That's been a huge question. Why? I don't know. Maybe maybe it was an agreement with myself, you know, before coming into this form uh, so that I would, you know, have uh, be able to kind of garner that bigger picture. I really don't know. But um, so, yeah, about once every six weeks, I can go a couple of months without having one, but it, it averages out to about once every six weeks. Um, so, when I started documenting them, there's a few that have that have stayed with me that are very vivid. Oftentimes, probably 60, 75 percent of the time when they happen, um, I'm just doing that. You, know, you get that vibration and you're just kind of twisting or lifting out and I can't seem to, to launch, if you will. And then I'll just go right back into my body. Um, but once you start looking into techniques and how how to cultivate them, um, William Buhlman is a great resource. His whole market is on how to um, induce them. Um, and so he'll say that it's really your intent. So if you're focusing and you're coming out and you'll say, you know, if you want to head toward the door, you'll say like door now and just keep that intent. The second you start thinking about your body or any bit of fear that would come in, you typically will just come right out of it. And how you know you're not asleep, it's really, it happens within that theta state. So it's just about, you're just super relaxed. Um, you can certainly meditate and these can probably happen pretty easily. Um, but just right before you're, you're about ready to, to be unconscious or go to sleep, um, that's typically when it happens. Uh, I do recall one time uh, just laying in bed, just relaxing, kind of not taking a nap per se, but just really relaxing. I must have been very tired. And my eyes were looking at a fixture, just kind of staring at this fixture. And uh, sure enough, I started feeling the vibrations and, you know, and so I typically get um, a big smile on my face. And this oftentimes happens in the middle of the night as well, um, because I know it's an opportunity to launch and to go somewhere. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> force myself to get out there. If anybody's read uh, any of Bob Monroe's books, those are fabulous books. Um, my experience, my experiences haven't been quite that exciting. I wish I could say they were. Um, but a few of them that that have really stuck with me, um, especially early on when they started happening. Um, I remember leaving, leaving the apartment I was in um, going outside, kind of looking down the street, and I live at the ocean, and I could see the water, I can see the, you know, the blueness of the water, and I can actually feel that it was kind of a warm day. And then I came, came right back. And that's so that really just the visual of it really stuck with me. Uh, another experience was I was living in my sister's guest house. And my nephew at the time, he was probably 14 or 15, stayed up often, two, three o'clock in the morning. He was a, do, on his computer doing whatever. I think he's a big gamer. And um, so uh, that vivid memory was, okay, let me see if I can go out the window. <laughs> so as I'm heading toward the, the level or blinds, it's like, okay, here we go. You know, am I going to feel this? And I just don't, you, I don't feel anything. I just go right through went around the house, could see my nephew's uh, corner bedroom. Um, 
didn't have any curtains where the windows were and he's he's right there at his at his computer and so I just looked at him and then I thought to myself I want to try something different like I don't know what let's try something different so I willed myself or my intent to go underground so I went underground and I came <laughs> very bizarre so I came face to face with a um like a rodent that would be you know burrowing underground and I felt like it saw me because it kind of like stood up and we kind of like looked at each other. And then I just remember going right back. It's like, and then I'm awake kind of thing. Like I'm fully awake. Um, let's see some of these, some of the other experiences. So here at home, um, oftentimes I'm just kind of exploring the bedroom. Um, I can't seem to go, you know, quite beyond that, but we'll have like textured walls. So I want to like feel the wall to see if I can feel that texture. Um, and I don't think I did. It's just like your hand kind of goes goes through it. Um, or I'll be I'll be going along the bedspread and I'm like right there. I can see this. I'm like right in line with the stitching on the on the bedspread. <laughs> so it's just all these little fine um, details that I'm like looking at. Um, my boyfriend was asleep on the couch one time. So I decided to see if I could go go in and and see him. Uh, so I did, I went right, I went out the bedroom, through the bathroom, and then just kind of nestled into, into where he was laying. And then I asked him after, I said, did you, did you feel anything, you know, and he's like, nope. <laughs> I think he thinks this is all hooey, but that's okay. Um, and another time he was walking in toward the bedroom, and I just went like right through him. So it's these little, little, little experiences that happen. Um, in the middle of the night, about four or five times, um, I love music. Um, I play guitar. My, that's my whole hobby side of me, anything to do with music. Um, so this was interesting. So when the vibrations are happening, um, I started hearing this music and I didn't recognize it, but it was, it was music that resonated with me. Um, some some if you can think of like something that would sound like the rolling stones just a just a really good <laughs> good riff good good sounding music if you like the rolling stones um and i i'm saying to myself oh my god this is an amazing song like this would be an instant uh, an instant hit um and i'm like oh yeah i'll remember it and of course i i couldn't remember the exact um melody but that, that has happened about three or four times, you know, what, what that's about, I'm not sure. Oh, one other thing I thought was really interesting is I had read um, in other people's um, description of what happens to them or what they feel like they're, that's happening to them, is they described it as, along with the vibrations, it feels like somebody taking a sparkler and running it up and down your spine. And I thought, oh gosh, that is so weird. And maybe uh, somewhere a year or two later, I felt that only one time. Uh, that's only happened to me once, but it that is a great description. It just felt like, and it didn't hurt, but it definitely felt like like something running a sparkler up and down your spine. So I thought that was that was sort of interesting. Um, also, I know uh, a very common technique to induce them. Uh, would be to use something called hemi-sync or binaural beats. And I think there's all kinds of apps you can probably download for binaural beats. And one day, this is many years ago, when I, I first just was reading about it, I thought, oh, okay, let me see if this works. And to, and to this point, mine are always spontaneous. Um, I really haven't, call it laziness, <laughs> haven't tried to induce them. Um, so, but I thought, okay, let's, let me try these beats. So I downloaded some and put the ear the earbuds in and uh somewhere within five five to ten minutes uh sure enough uh I started to feel those vibrations I'm like oh I'll be darned this actually does this does work it just it must be putting you in that theta state you know just that kind of really relaxed um almost meditational state and something happens and I guess if you're inclined to have them, or maybe if they come easy, easier to you, um, you can definitely have them. Um, as far as, you know, any, anything that, 
would have made me initially start to have these, like, am I a very, you know, hippy dippy spiritual <laughs> dug crystals and all that around? No, not really. Um, I mean, I'm interested in this, in the, the topic, obviously, because these have happened to me. So I've read a lot of, you know, great books, really interesting books, like, like Robert Monroe's books. Um, but, um, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why these happen to some people and some people they don't. Uh, I have, I do have two sisters and I will say that they know, they know what I'm talking about because one sister, um, it's, it's happened to on several occasions. I don't think she, she does, you know, tries to cultivate it or anything. And I believe the other sister said that she knew she goes, yeah, I've gotten those vibrations before. Um, but again, doesn't, doesn't choose to go there. Um, so I don't know, is it genetic? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it's something, uh, like I said, something that maybe you decide to bring with you, you know, in your contract, uh, so that you can, can remember something about the bigger picture. So it's just really, it's giving me comfort in that, um, you know, I, I don't feel like it's dirt, you know, after, after we decide to leave um, that, that there's definitely something beyond this, this form. Um, so, and it's also helped me to try, <laughs> try as much as I can to kind of stay in the flow, um, in the everyday flow and, and not sweat, um, you know, the small stuff or, you know, just, just know that, uh, things, things, things will, things will work out, um, you know, be that change you want to see in the world and, and do one to others, you know, so, and I don't know, so far it's, it's, it seems to work, um, you know, the, the help and the kindness that you put out there, um, just people, people see it, 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 it comes around, which, which is nice, nice to think about. I have had several out of body experiences as well, and they didn't start until after the death of my husband and they mm -hmm. were spontaneous. I didn't even know what was happening. Um, so I want to thank you first of all, for sharing your story for anyone who is having strange experiences that this could be an out of body experience to help them understand what's going on with them. Um, but what I found was that those sensations you're talking about the vibrations and I felt like a really intense, loud, loud sound in my head. It was like a train running through my brain. It was so intense, it was frightening for me. Have you ever had any fear when you're leaving, like in the beginning or anything yeah. like that? Uh, surprisingly, no. Um, <laughs> we'll see what happens going forth. Um, but I can certainly understand if that's never happened to you before and it can't, sometimes they're, they're a little more intense than other times. So when you're talking about like, it sounds like a freight train kind of going, I, I can understand that because it, it does, that buzzing can get really loud, really fast in your head. Um, so for, and, and for me, they're, they come in different levels. Sometimes they're more intense than others. Um, but maybe because I feel like I know, or I kind of know what the feeling is going to be like, it, it hasn't, I haven't had any fear revolving around it. Thank goodness. Um, but I can certainly understand not, not knowing or have, have, have had them before, uh, that would put some fear into somebody like, what is this? You know, what, <laughs> what is going on? Um, and you can certainly, I suppose you can. You just, you just keep positive thoughts going, you know, kind of maybe surround yourself with, you know, white light or something, if that helps you, you know, get through it. Uh, you know, if you, if you're trying to induce OBEs, just kind of put that out there, like for protection. I think it's whatever you, you tend to believe in, you know, if you don't believe you need that, then you don't need it. Um, so, but there's, there's a lot of great, great books out there. Um, I would, I would recommend anything by William Buhlman. Um, if you're looking to put the science behind it, somebody like Tom Campbell kind of help his physicist, Tom Cam Campbell will, uh, put OBEs kind of, uh, well, he worked with Robert M Monroe, um, but 
kind of linking the science uh, behind consciousness and and linking the two together. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are doing that these days. Um, specific um, stories or, or things that have happened to people. Dr. Jill Bolte-Taylor has a terrific story. I believe she did one of the very first, if not the first TED, TED Talk. Um, but her experience, um, it, it wasn't an OBE. Um, I don't even think she even labels hers as a near-death experience, but it was something in between, but certainly fascinating uh, to listen to. So um, uh, there's a gal named Ula Saramento, uh, who has some fabulous books on really the whole process, the bigger picture. She works a lot with Guy Steven Needler, um, and I think she's even written, co-written or helped uh, uh, write his latest book. Um, oh, um, Melon Thomas Benedict. Also, Nancy Dannison. I, those are two really good stories. Those are ND years. Uh, and I want to say Melon Thomas Benedict has one of the longest NDEs clocked. Um, and he brings back a ton of information. I know I'm kind of getting off of the OBE path, but um, uh, but if you're interested in OBEs and those are happening or just in the bigger picture, um, he brings he brought back a lot of information when he when he merges with source, as did um, Nancy Dannison. Those two I found uh, extremely fascinating. And all of your your guests are have been uh, very enlightening and very interesting to listen to. You have full control when you leave your body. Um, it sounds like, is that correct? Yeah. For me, that's been the case. Yeah. Anytime you think of your body or you're like, mm, you will go right back in. Um, oh, one other thing I, I can add, which I found interesting, um, when I'm listening to someone that's had a near-death experience, oftentimes they will say they had no, either no memory or no regard for their body, uh, that being because they're not their body so they're they're still thinking they're still them you know they're they're coming from the perspective of their consciousness you know so you don't think that you have a body or you're like ah, oh, you know that's not me kind of thing and I kind of had an epiphany one day in that when I'm when I'm experiencing these OBEs um I have never thought, oh, let me, except for that one, the very first time, because I wanted to see the position of my body just to see if I could verify what, what was going on. Um, but I don't think of my body. I don't say, oh, I'm going to go, let me see what my body looks like, you know, because it's not, I'm thinking it's not me. It's not truly me and who I am. So I'm just concentrating on where I'm going, like you would as you're walking into another room, if that makes any sense. So if the body is not you, and you're just kind of floating around and exploring, what are you? What are you? Exactly. Well, yeah. A <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> uh, partitioned off piece of source, I suppose. Uh, that's kind of makes sense. So then yeah, collectively, we're, we're all we're all one, which may it, it, you know, when you listen to when you listen to those that have had near death experiences, when they say that they can, they can feel what every other being uh, in the universe felt, I think it's, yet, or that anyone that would be here, coming here uh, in form, I think they're feeling that because if we're all, you know, coming from the same, if we're collectively, you know, this uh, one, source partitioned off then yeah you would feel what everybody else has felt because you are them or they are you I think Tom Campbell would say you know whole consciousness or uh you know, it it wants us to succeed it helps us because it is us we are it it it, it is it is us so it behooves it to help because it just um raises that uh that quality of your consciousness and and uh as a a that's 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 what you're taking with you it's it's uh i think the idea is to is to gain um as many experiences as you can i guess suppose good and bad um but to grow the quality of your consciousness and so it then as a whole grows 
as it's trying to experience itself. You were talking about you can just kind of think of your body and you'll be back at your body. Is there a connection? Some people have described like a silver cord. Have you seen anything like that? I have never seen a silver cord, interestingly enough. Um, Yeah. And I know that was really big, I think, in the 80s. Um, And I can't remember who said it, but somebody recently said there's no need like there's no need for the cord. So people don't see it again. I think it goes back to, you know, what let's say what you believe in or um, your intent. Um, so if you think you need that cord uh, to keep you attached, then you probably would see it. Um, it isn't anything I'm ever thinking of. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm just being lazy and <laughs> in uh, what I'm supposed to be seeing or not seeing, but I have never seen, never, yeah. I I haven't seen the silver cord either in my experience and I didn't even at a point there was a point when I first started having them that I didn't really know about near-death experiences Mm -hmm. and so I didn't know anything about the silver cord being connected during or during an out-of-body experience um so there was no belief system in place um and even after I heard of it that's when I had my big full-blown one and I didn't didn't see one yeah. either. So who knows? It's very interesting. <laughs> um, did you ever try to find validating information, like test yourself by, I know that they've done some clinical tests where they put like a number on a piece of paper up on a high cabinet or something like that. Did you ever do anything like that or, <laughs> or have any validating information come yeah. back to you? No, I, I'm kind of a lazy traveler, I guess, I don't know what you, what, what you want to call it. But um, I think I, I would hope, along with a, a laundry list of books I'd still like to read, um, if retirement is ever in my vocabulary, I don't know if it is, but I keep thinking of oh, someday I'm going to have, I'm going to have uh, all this time to, to, you know, do exactly what you're saying. I haven't to this day. Um, and again, it just might be my, my lazy nature. Um, but since they've happened for so long, I just know that they will happen. Uh, so I don't feel, I just don't feel the, the need to try and induce it. Um, and I haven't, I haven't thought, oh, let me put a target because to me that would say, okay, now I'm going to try and do it. And I know that target's there. I should probably try that. That's not a bad idea. So then actually, you know, you trust yourself and you know, what's happening. You don't need to validate it for yourself because you know it, the validation would come in, you know, conversations with other people, or if you were trying to prove it in some way to another person. Um, if you know it, you know it. And that's the way I feel too. Like I know what my experiences were, what happened. And I don't ever try to, I didn't feel the need to validate it. Right. So. Yeah. I think sometimes I, I don't, I don't bring this up unless I'm in, unless the topic comes up. I mean, I'm happy to share. It's, it's, I know oftentimes people will think, eh, you need to be in, know your audience or be in, be in the right company, but um, it, it really does have, you have to experience it in order to re- fully understand and integrate that and say, yeah, this, this definitely happened. You definitely know it is not a dream. It's not a dream. Uh, you, you will get these vibrations. Um, you may go someplace, you may just kind of stay within the room, um, or you may just, like you said, just kind of twist out and then come back in. Um, but they're very, um, they're very vivid. They're not like a dream and you're instantly like awake. It's like that just, you know, okay, that just happened. Oh, and one other, one other thing, this has happened many, many times. Um, it's interesting that they're just, they're very different each time. Uh, sometimes I just find myself, I don't know what light speed would feel like, but you feel, I feel like I'm going at like light speed through the universe. It's a little bit like your background. Um, you know, I, I, I'm seeing like lights, whether they're planets, stars, both nebulas, I don't know, just go whizzing by me and I'm going at a very, very, very fast speed. Um, and then again, I, I'm like, the second you, you kind of, take yourself out of it like oh this wait what's this you know and then I'm back (laughs) so um 
as soon as I just I decide to try and uh, cultivate them a little bit more, if I if I have some some exciting experiences, um, I'll certainly certainly come back. But to this day, other than like I said, maybe an animal, and I've seen my boyfriend here. I'm not see I'm not seeing other um, whether they're they've passed or they're still in form. I don't I don't I'm not interacting. Um, but if you read some of Bob Monroe's books, you'll see that he's interacting <laughs> most definitely. Um, it's fascinating. Uh, it, if it's ever happened to anybody, just know that, um, you can cultivate it and you can take it, you can take it places. Um, and if it does happen to you, it's, it's, it's definitely something, um, it's not nothing, um, but it, I would say it's it's hard to convey to somebody unless they've um, experienced it for themselves. Speaking about how really an experience for yourself, a personal experience is gonna be the best validation that you, you can actually provide to someone. Yeah. Are there any specific tips that you can give? Cause I know you have them spontaneous, but you've done a ton of research and you do use some techniques sometimes to help further your experience. Um, can you give us kind of like a, a step-by-step um, technique that you've heard of or that you've learned of that you feel works pretty yeah. well? Um, I would definitely try, if you've never had the experience for the kind of keep in mind of what, you know, anything that you've heard in this, this podcast or anything else that you've read um, of, of what could happen and kind of be cognizant of that. First of all, um, I would definitely try something like binaural beats because that seems to be a good, a good way to launch. Um, the people will say though, it's like, if you, if you're serious about this and you really want to um, see where it can go, Sometimes the binaural beats are, they're like, you look at them like training wheels. You don't want to be dependent on them. So try and try and do it on your own. Certainly meditation, anything that's going to put you in that kind of theta state, a real relaxed state. So if you, if you do any, any type of meditation or transcendental meditation, that can certainly put you in, in that, um, that launching step. Um, and then, um, I believe William Buhlman has some key, some, he has a lot of YouTube videos, some key words to say. Um, I forget if it's launch now, <laughs> something like that, but, and it may take several times for it to happen. Um, and if it's, if you, this is something interesting too. I do find that they happen more often when I'm reading something on the topic, if I'm reading, you know, a book that somebody that's, that's either had an NDE or an OB or OBEs, um, or even listening to podcasts, um, it, they tend to happen. In fact, I, a few weeks ago when you and I spoke, um, I had one within the week. So it's just kind of bringing the whole topic and subject um, in the forefront in your mind, it, it might help. Um, at least it does for me. And it's like, oh, well, there you go. See, one, <laughs> one happened. Um, Robert Peterson, I remember he has a lot of techniques and I don't know how many books he has. I only have the one book. Um, and it is a form of meditation. And I think he's saying, you know, visualize almost like a like a, is it a pendulum swing, um, but he does it like this way. And I did try that once um, <laughs> we were on vacation and I was just kind of relaxing in the room. And I, I was think I was rereading his book or something and I tried it and sure enough, it worked for me. Um, and I, I just, I heard and saw things around the room, rumblings of my boyfriend, whatever he was doing, didn't, didn't launch any further than that, but it, it's a good way. It's a good launching, um, practice, um, these techniques, but hemisync for sure, binaural beats for sure, I think would be, would be my first step if you've never had one and just reading on the topic, um, reading various books. Um, I think Robert Monroe's books are pretty helpful. Tom Campbell's have been very interesting uh coming from the physics um point of view um i'm sure there's many more um if if anybody uh wants to contact i can certainly shoot off a bunch of um links to various um 
people and books that I've, I've found is super interesting and if not helpful over the years. What is yeah. the difference between a near-death experience and an out-of-body experience or, or better yet, what, what are the similarities? Well, I haven't had personally a, near, a near-death experience, um, but from, from the research that I've done, it would say, I would say the difference, one of the biggest differences, um, again, I, 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 I I suppose these are all metaphors, but um, the various, I'm going to say, um, densities or places or, or levels that you would go. I think when you have near death experiences, you're you're in a different a different area. You're in a different realm. They're definitely, you know, they have that teacher protector or, or guide with them. They're interacting uh, with people. Uh, they're given messages are told, eh, sorry, you gotta, you gotta go back. Um, or they're given a choice with OBEs. I, again, just speaking for myself, um, I believe I'm, I'm going, um, only so far, in, I guess it's more inward. I mean, you want to say it's out there, but I think it's more, more in, um, that physical material reality area. Um, so it, I'm limited. I'm still kind of here. I'm still <laughs> somewhat, I don't think I'm completely through that veil. I think that's the biggest difference. I think ND ears or, or de have definitely pierced that veil. Um, then they're, they're able to gain that, that awareness or those knowings of, you know, how, how the universe works, how it's all connected, you know, the, really the bigger picture, um, I'm not gaining any of that information, at least not to this point. It'd be nice if someone said, <laughs> tap me on the shoulder when it happens and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here, you know, ask some questions or um, hopefully that wouldn't freak me out. But um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not gaining, the only, the only real knowledge or, or the, the big thing that I've gotten out of it is that comfort to know that, yeah, you do you do separate from this form. There is something else out there. Um, I, I'm in all, again, the research that I've done, I don't have any fear of, of dying. Um, now I feel like I've got a little bit of a roadmap, like, okay, yeah, it looks like, <laughs> looks like this is it. Okay. Where's the light? Mm, let's see. I think I'm supposed to go there, that kind of thing. So it's, it's given me um, you know, a, a little sense of, of that there, of the, a bigger picture. Um, so that I'm, I'm grateful for because I'm the type of person that would just like ruminate on, oh my God, what, what happens, you know, what happens after. So it's, it's been comforting. Nobody wants to disintegrate if they're ill and this and that, that's, that's the fearful part, but in terms of the transition, not, not, not at all, not at this, at this point. Um, uh, one other nice thing that's come out of it is this isn't for everybody. It's, it's kind of dark, but um, I had an aunt that kind of um, headed up her chapter um, at her local hospital. Um, so we have like a program out here called NODA, which is stands for no one dies alone. So it was really designed for people that had no one, like no family, no friends. So um, as a volunteer, you can go through training and simulations. And so you can just kind of go and hold space for that person. Um, I know oftentimes you can have a shared death experience with someone. And if, if, if that were to happen, hopefully I can, it can be helpful uh, to someone that is um, crossing over in, in terms of where they're going, et cetera. But it's really just to hold space for that person so that they're not alone. You can play music, you can meditate. Um, uh, all of the people that I've sat with have, have been unconscious because they're, they're right at that point, um, which generally hospice patients are but um but that's kind of nice and I don't think if these had ever happened to me I would have ever have thought to do something like that so I don't find it you know dark or weird or anything like that so anyway but that's if anybody's ever interested they, you know it's a nice thing to be able to do um as a volunteer yeah that is nice and yeah I, I agree with you I don't I don't find death dark or weird either you know it's just a natural yeah. process 
a natural thing that happens to us when we die or you know through in our lives so it just is what it is and i don't think it's morbid i think it's beautiful that you volunteer Oh, it, yeah. It's, I didn't even know it existed <laughs> until I was, you know, speaking with my aunt. We're kind of cut from the same cloth. She's probably one of very few in my family that understood what what I'd gone through. And um, sh I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't around her a lot because she lived in a different state and out of the country most of my life. But, um, but when we did speak about all of this, um, she had spent time at the Monroe Institute, which I, I never knew. That just kind of blew me away. I'm like, wow, not only does she know of it, she's spent time there. I have not. Um, <laughs> but that's a great place, supposedly, if you want to have out-of-body experiences. And uh, there's workshops there. That's probably a really good a good place to visit. Did she have some while she was there? Uh, you know, I don't remember. I don't even know if we talked about that. She just said, oh, yeah, I've been here, done that. I was at the Monroe Institute. I'm like, what? Um, yeah, she unfortunately um, had a son that that passed away early on. So I think she she did volunteer work like that to kind of help help her through her grieving process. And it just kind of, I think, took on a life of its own. And this is going back probably 45, 50 years. Um, and she just recently passed away. Oh, something interesting. I, I don't know if this is connected to, maybe I'm just uh, sensitive. I mean, a lot of people are, but um, oftentimes if, if a relative or somebody I know has passed on or if they're going to pass on, I just get I think of, I think of them. I'll leave there have a dream of them. Um, that happened with another aunt. I was asking my mother, oh, how is, you know, so-and-so? And she said, why do you ask? Uh, and I said, I just had a dream about her. You know, how's she doing? She says, oh, she, well, she passed away 10, 10 days ago or something like that. So again, not sure what that's about, but, and then oftentimes when uh, somebody's you know, getting ready to text or call, I will, I will think of them, which I'm sure happens to a lot of people, but that's 60, 70% of the time. So it, it's either I'm thinking of them and they're going to text me, or I've picked up on that. They're going to text me and then they, they end up texting me. Oh, one last thing. I thought this was super interesting. Um, I, I was, le I was leaving to go to a party down the street and I, I had put on a sweater that I, I hadn't wore in years and um, as I was leaving, I felt in the pocket and I, I pulled out a business card and it was um, a business card of my previous supervisor. Um, so this is going back about eight, nine years and we hadn't spoken since. And I got to the party and within the hour, I got a text from him and we've never spoken since, since I left that company. Um, he was just asking a, um, a question about his son who was uh, had just graduated from college and wanted some advice because the um, industry he was going in was was a similar industry as my boyfriend who wanted some some tips and tricks. So again, whatever that is, I thought that was really bizarre that I saw his business card and then he. So I don't know. I don't know what that is. If anybody out there knows, <laughs> you have a connection, called. yeah, to the to yeah. the collective. Yeah. For sure. right. Um, so I think that ties in with what I was saying about like just kind of being in the flow. Just, yeah, being in the flow. Um, one business trip, as I, I often go on business trips for work, um, I noticed on this trip, I don't know, it was about four, four days, every single thing that happened on that trip, and this does not normally happen, every every interaction I had was blissful super helpful super nice people were just going above and beyond and I thought I just I mean it wasn't lost on me so I don't know what that was about but from the uber driver going you know to the airport to the rental car people to hotel to the people I met in the hotel in the bar area just every interaction I had was super positive um anyway again throw that in the bucket of you know that's kind of kind of interesting being in the flow that's yeah
you spoke a little bit about the difference between NDEs and OBEs and there's like this veil and NDEs pierce that veil. When you're having an OBE, you're staying more on this physical realm. Are there still different realms that you can visit? From, and I haven't read, I've probably read maybe a half a dozen books to a dozen books on the topic. And yeah, there's, there's several different, um, again, I'm just going to call them densities or um, dimensions uh, that you can go to. And um, honestly, uh, I've read where, I mean, there's countless, there's just, there, there's countless um, areas you can go. It's all thought responsive. Um, I think if, 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 if you're very religious, I think you're going to gravitate toward, um, an area with, with, and maybe even perhaps, um, once you've completely pierced the veil, um, and you've, you're off <laughs> and out of this form, I think you will go to a place that resonates with you. It's kind of like, I think when I was having the OBEs with the music, it's just that it just resonated so much with me that that it either came to me or I came to it, but it was, it was a very, I just loved it. It was, it was new. It was right in my wheelhouse. And, um, you know, the more of those can happen, the better. Um, I don't know if that answered your question, but. Uh. <laughs> um, when, when my husband died, I had a shared death experience and I feel like that kind of opened a portal in a way. And then I started having the out of body experiences um, mm -hmm. on a pretty frequent basis once a week or more. Yeah. Um, and for many years I had them and then I haven't had them for many years, but um, was there a traumatic event in your life that maybe started your near death experiences yeah. or you're not anything that opened that you feel like could have opened a connection or a portal that would be too easy <laughs> um nothing no uh it happened it started about i think i was around 21 or 22 years old um yeah there's nothing i can think of that's that's just been the the most perplexing thing all of these years it's like why and why now and what am i supposed to gain from this other than it just is what it is i mean you can do research as soon as the internet was available you know that just opened doors for me anyway for everybody that wants to wants to do research on this um you know prior to that it was just a couple of books but i can't think of anything that would have caused it um sort of sort of in line with what you what you just asked but not really um I did take notice of there's been three or four times in my life that um there were near accidents that have happened that I could have easily um had left um all surrounding head trauma um but I survived them but I thought that was interesting. It's like, why is every, all the, these things happening surrounding like, you know, a contusion on the head or something that near missed falling, you know, to decapitate me? Um, yeah, I can think of at least three. There may have been a fourth one out there. Um, that I would have said would have been, you know, kind of traumatic, but, um, but I haven't left yet, um, at least in that in that manner mm. so yeah it's a big it's a big mystery a big question and and the only conclusion that I come up with is that perhaps it you know if if we truly can somewhat design or map out our goals in this this form this life experience I, potentially I had written that in like to be able to to do this you know, I don't know if I'm having help or maybe it's help from myself. <laughs> um, but it, it it just, it's a butterfly effect if you look at it like, okay, well, if this is happening to me and then I can do some research on it and then what you're doing, you know, you could help X amount of people. I mean, that's what people that have had NDEs are doing, you know, sharing their experiences and in hopes that it 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 helps someone in some some way. So that was really my intent uh, 
you know, for talk, speaking with you is that if it could help anybody um, or if they had any questions or I could potentially even learn from somebody else, you know, I was happy to share, to share it. So <laughs> I guess I'm officially out of the closet here. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. And so when you had your first experience, you know, like some people may have experiences, they don't know what's happening. Exactly. What was it like for you when you had your first experience? Did you kind yeah. of question reality what tell me about that I know. I know um I think I immediately grabbed some books um I think Shirley McLean had come out with her books around that time um certainly Edgar Casey had a lot of a lot of books on the topic um the the original Tyler Henry uh <laughs> is a guy named uh, George Anderson automatic writer um so it, it it shook me into into researching about it and these were the people that I went to uh to kind of learn about the their experiences so it didn't really um and I don't know what I believed in prior to um I was raised Catholic uh made my my first communion but nothing beyond that and we were all, we were like the fairly weather you know, churchgoers. I think we just went a couple times on the holidays. So that never resonated with me and never really thought much of it and just went on with school and growing up and boys and uh, yeah. Um, so when it happened, um, it, it wasn't like you were saying it can, it can feel, you know, weird, you know, or you know, dare I say demonic um, or anything like that. It, it wasn't like that. It was just that vibration. And I was like, what, what is this vibration? Um, and then that's just prompted me to, to, to look into, um, into books. And like I said, having people like Shirley MacLaine, bringing it to the forefront, you know, she was still is to this day, you know, very, a very popular actress. Um, it, it helped me to, to not, be fearful at all from it and say, Oh, there's definitely a lot to this. Um, you know, you, and even more so now, obviously. So, um, thankfully, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't anything weird, but I did, it did, it did allow me to say, you know, this isn't the only reality. I mean, this isn't it. Um, which is kind of a, a pretty arrogant thing to think about, I suppose. But um, I was always like open to, oh gosh, there's there's an infinite amount of places uh, out there to to discover, and uh, supposedly we can do it out of form, but uh, but but in form seems to be a, a special thing, and um, and I think that you know it, we're here to be to be blissful and to, to enjoy it. Um, so if, if I try and remind myself of that, you know, um, and just, uh, think of other, it's not all about self, but, um, that's all, you know, about helping others. So, and it's, that's also, I think, helping yourself as well. I was just going to say, ultimately yeah. we're all one, right? So exactly. yeah, exactly. Um, that's a good way. It's a good way to look at life. And then, you know, obviously if you, <laughs> if you're bumping into to people that are, that are not thinking along those lines, you know, hopefully if you can, you know, talk the, walk the, talk the walk or whatever that saying is, if somebody takes note of that, um, you know, then maybe that's helpful that they can see that somebody else can react differently and not get stressed out and, and try to be more helpful versus just getting frustrated and saying an unkind uh, word or doing an unkind thing to somebody else. Uh, mm, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. It comes with age too. So there's a saying that I like, and it says, be the change that you want to see yeah. in the world. So yeah. yeah, be a shining example. I love that. Um, yeah. What's your biggest takeaway from all this Oh, goodness. Um, definitely, um, you know, glimpsing a little bit of the of the bigger picture. But um, I think it's just really, it's really important to be kind to yourself, you know, kind to others and self love. Don't be so hard on yourself. 
like I said, I think I think we're here to be blissful, to be helpful, um, enjoy life, you know, carp, carp DM. Um, you know, in a way, yeah, this 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 you do just have this one life because you do as this character. This is it. So, <laughs> you know, don't don't wait to, you know, wear that dress or or uh you know, get together with that person because yeah, it, it you just you don't know when when it's all gonna stop in this in this incarnation. So um so just make the most of the most of it. Um yeah, take those trips, don't wait. Um live life to the fullest and yeah, do unto others as you would want done unto you, I suppose. Um, yeah, and I, I hope that, you know, if you want to experience an OBE, that it can happen for, for those out there that are looking for it. I don't think it's impossible. I think it's quite possible, actually, with a, with a few tools um, and some concentration. Yeah, absolutely. Love everything you just said. I resonate with that 100%. Um, and I want to thank you so much for being my guest. This has been such a pleasure for me. And very informative and I'm sure very helpful for many. I hope so. I hope so. And likewise. And thank you again for for everything you're doing. It's it's super helpful and super interesting. So thank you for having me. And before we go, if my viewers wanted to reach out to you, how can they find you? Yeah, they can find me. Um, they can find me on Facebook. Um, <laughs> I guess I already I already showed my age, but uh <laughs> I'm on Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, email, emails, probably maybe even the best, the best way, which would just be C marks with an X M A R X at hotmail.com. Wonderful, Chris. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks to you. Have a good one. Thank you for being here. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you being here and supporting my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing if you enjoy near-death experiences and other spiritually transformative stories. It helps the algorithm know that this information is useful and push it out to more people. And that's the goal to get as many people to know that we are eternal spiritual beings and that we never die. Our bodies might die, but our essence will never die. And I want people to live with less fear. Let's all spread the word, like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that little notification bell so you get all the notifications when my videos post. Thank you for all of your support. I'm sending love to you.